Hello, I hope everybody's having a blessed one. I want to thank you very much for tuning in to my video. I hope everyone is blessed along this new year. So today, this message has been in my heart for a long time. And I personally can like talk about it from personal experience. And my message today is about false teachers or false prophets. And like this is a problem even today and even during Jesus time. There are a lot of false teachers leading people astray. Teaching new age spiritualism. Teaching things that are contrary to the Bible. And like Jesus said it himself. So in the gospel in Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. And this is the King James Version. It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But in worldly, they are ravening wolves. They also said, many will come in my name. They will perform miracles, signs, and wonders where they to deceive you. So like Jesus was already warning us, and there's multiple scriptures throughout the, the Bible that warns us of false teachers. They will, have, they will create all these fake revelations. They will say, oh, God showed me this. They were speaking heresy, speaking lies. So false teachers, even in Jesus' time, it was really, really a problem. And like Jesus, when Jesus was, was here, he was talking to the Pharisees. He was speaking against them. So the consequence of being a false teacher, of spreading bad doctrine. And I mean, me personally, if there's something that I don't understand, I don't try to preach ab about it until I understand it because I don't want to fall in that category because false because false preachers are a serious problem in this day and age. And I know a lot and I'm not going to mention names, but like I'm just going to show you today signs of a false teacher so that you yourself would know better. So let's go over the consequences. In Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 to 9, it says, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then you have received, let him be cursed. So pretty much like, if you're, if you're preaching something and saying this is God's word, you're relying on God. And that and that itself is an offense. What was one of the commandments? You shall not use the Lord's name in vain. So like when you're preaching this and saying this is God's word, when you're, when you're lying on the Bible, you're committing an offense not against, not only against your brethren, but you're committing an offense against God. And this is a great, great offense. This is a great offense. So like, I really want to warn people today to stay away from false teachers or false prophets. In 2 John chapter 1, verse 9 through 10, it says, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ you have both the Father and the Son. If they come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speak. So, like, we have to stay away from false teachers. We put that carry other doctrines. And, like, I can attest to this. So, like, when I was still, like, pretty, pretty young in Christianity, I would like get sucked into this like new age things. Like at one point I used to believe in astrology, but then I really did research in it and found out it was the money. And at first it was making sense to me because I was like, of course we have to have angels and maybe they communicate with you through numbers. Because when I read the Bible, I really started to understand the significance of numbers of seven of the Trinity 
So I was like, uh, I was like, all these numbers that I've seen, there's gotta, this patterns, it, it gotta make sense. But then I started learning about like the demonic roots that it has. So like, if anybody else is is bringing the doctrine contrary to yours, so you gotta be careful with that person because they can contaminate you. You know that you know that saying: birds of the same feathers flock together. Who you who you surround yourself with can change you, can affect how you think. So, let me go over some signs of a false teacher. Number one, they don't follow what they preach, and this is a very big one. I see a lot of prosperity preachers. They preach about being content. They preach about all these things, but you'll see them with private jets. You'll see them constantly getting money from the church to fund a lavish lifestyle. So one of the biggest signs to spot a false teacher is they don't follow what they preach. Number two, and this is another big one. They are receiving, they are receiving more worship, especially at that church and people actually worship God. And this is the thing that I've noticed a lot. A lot of people be worshiping these preachers. I'm like, aren't you there to worship God? And I mean, there's nothing wrong with celebrating a man of God. I don't believe there's not anything wrong with that. But there comes a point where it's it's all right becoming worship. Number three, and this goes with number one, they misuse the church money. And this is another big one. I believe that the church was meant to take care of the community, was meant to take care of the homeless, the sick, to feed people, to clothe people. I believe and and to preach and to share the message. I don't believe a church was meant to, to fund a lavish lifestyle for a pastor, to fund private jets, to fund big, big lands. So that's another sign if they misuse the church money. Number four, they preach what is contrary to the Bible. Now that's another big one. I honestly believe the, the, the Bible is the sole truth, the very, very truth. And I mean, of course, you can always still receive revelations from God. But like, if you're reading the Bible and what they're preaching is contrary to, to the Bible and you see that they, they always seem to misinterpret scripture, that is another sign of a false teacher. Number five, they lie a lot. Now, they may say, "Oh, they made um, they made a mistake." Now, at first, you can you could give them a you may be like inclined to give them a pass and be like, "Oh, maybe they made a mistake. Maybe it wasn't the intention to lie." But if you keep seeing inconsistencies in what they tell you and what they are preaching, then it's obvious that they lie a lot. And like scripture has let us know that God did not give us lying lips. So that's another sign of a false teacher. They lie a lot. Number six, they use religious blackmailing. And this is another big one. They make you religious blackmail, like it's a very big category. They may make it seem like, oh, if you don't continuously give tithes, then you don't love God. If you don't show up to every service, you don't love God. They could make it seem like, oh, if you don't do this that they've told you, oh, God is going to punish and curse you. That is religious blackmailing. And that's one of the big signs of a false teacher. Number seven, your spirit is telling you there's something up. Now, when you ask God for that sermon, understanding of his ways, he's going to let you know that this person, there's something off about this church or this person. And a lot of times they'll call it God's, but it's your spirit. And if your spirit is telling you that there's something off, better look into it. Number eight, the church feels like a cult. Now, I remember personally, there was one church I used to go to. And I'm not going to mention names. And this church, it felt like a cult. Like they were doing pastoral worshiping. There was misuse of the church money. 
And what I think about some of his scriptures, what he was teaching, is really contrary to the Bible. This church felt like a cult. I mean, from morning to nighttime, church church was like every day for the members. Some people, some people would literally disregard their families, disregard their education. There wasn't no sort. There wasn't no sort of in the, a bit of individualism. It was all church, 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 and doing this for this pastor, doing that for the pastor. And the church felt like a cult. And then when people would leave, they would be shunned, and then the pastor would speak bad on them. The church felt like a cult. So if, so that's another sign that the church really feels like a cult. There's blackmailing, there's shaming, there's shunning. That's another sign. And then number nine, they speak false revelations or perform fake miracles. And on YouTube, you can see a lot of these videos, people with fake pastors performing fake miracles. And then sometimes, and in the Bible, I think it was I think it was the Old Testament, Deuteronomy. It pretty much spoke about they would, they would make false dreams. They'll be like, oh, God showed me this. God showed me that. They make a lot of false revelations. Now I can now I can say I can I'm a pastor, right? And be at the very front. And then I can be like, Oh, God God showed me this last night. Somebody here, ah, uh, you're gonna receive that new promotion. Now that is now the thing is those that is those the thing with those false revelations is they're very strategic. They're gonna say then they're gonna say something that's not too specific, that is very, very general. And that the chances of that happening are still very, very high. So some of these fake pastors, they always, they always, they, they, they make a lot of false revelations. They tell you, oh, God showed me this, God showed me that. And they use very specific, they, they, they're not too specific, they generalize so that the chances of it actually happen and it sounds more believable. So that's the, so I've been in church for a while to know these things. And then the last thing, they are involved in a lot of controversy. How much? How many times do you see a lot of these tele, tele evangelists? They are involved in a lot of controversy, whether it's miracle work, m miracle water, or whether it's a uh, private jet, or whether it's one of their comments saying that, "Oh, I don't want to go on a plane because it's filled with a lot of demons." If they are involved in a lot of controversy. That's another sign that they're a false teacher. So thank you very much. I hope you have a blessed one. And I hope that you like, share, and subscribe my message. Thank you very much.